Hey yo, it's Brian here. Today, gonna be talking about the San Francisco 49ers and gonna be grading their offensive and defensive performances for weeks through five through eight. What did I just say just now? But okay, let me do that again. Weeks five through eight. Okay, so that's the game against the Indianapolis Colts, all the way to the game against the Philadelphia Eagles that happened last Sunday. So let's just dive into it now. I'm gonna start with the offensive side of the ball. To be honest with you, I'll probably give them like a D because they're not really that good. They only had one good game out of the stretch, I would say. I can think against the game against the Redskins. That was a pretty good game. I mean, Brian Hoyer got benched so thank god he got benched and by the way he's released so he's not with the 49ers now he's with the Patriots hey, he's back home to where he got drafted with Tom Brady so congratulations Brian Hoyer I guess I wish it would have worked out in San Francisco but what can you do right so I uh, wish the best for him I'm not going to be one of those guys like oh go to hell or something like that you suck as a 49er quarterback you know he did suck as a 49er quarterback but at the same time I wish him the best to what he does in New England and what have you going back on topic hmm what do I have to say oh the offensive line that's the biggest reason I'm getting the D because it's really bad I think Trent Brown's out Joe Staley's gonna be out for a while for a broken orbital bone so I mean it hasn't been really well and I'm looking at statistics right here from NFL team rankings and they've allowed almost an average of four sacks a game so that is really bad it's like almost the bottom of the league for the last three games I don't want to do the whole season because that's not really fair to do the whole season but out of the Four games so far, the last three. I mean, this is the statistics for the last three, but, I mean, you can consider the last four. But it's been really bad no matter what. So, hopefully they can get that fixed for next season. Not really banking on this season because, I mean, what's the point of trying to fix everything if you're currently 0-8? You can't really make the playoffs, and it's kind of too late for anything else. So, I mean, I wouldn't try to, you know, do anything too crazy or anything. But hopefully next offseason they can address this in the draft and free agency, whoever's a free agent this year. But just the offensive line just looks absolutely terrible. And that's probably why C.J. Beathard's had really bad stats. It's I mean, he's been all right, I would say. I mean, I'm not going to say he's terrible, but he hasn't been, I don't know, he could be a little bit better just because the offensive line is really bad. And if we put Jimmy G in there for the next couple of weeks, then he's going to get beat up pretty well. So I think Kyle Shanahan knows this, and I don't think he'll start Jimmy G anytime soon. And C.J. Beathard, I feel kind of bad for him. I mean, Jimmy G's coming, but at the same time, I mean, he could come back to being a backup role. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a backup in the NFL. A lot of people embrace the role as a backup in the NFL. I mean, you ask Derek Anderson, you ask, uh, who else would you ask? Uh, Matt Hasselbeck years ago with Andrew Luck. I mean, there's a lot of people that embrace their backup roles, and there's nothing wrong with that, to be honest with you. I mean, that might actually be a good thing. So when the starter gets hurt, then you can just come in and boom, do some work. So um, CJ Beathard, don't know what's going to happen, but I mean, he's probably going to be the backup next season, and then Jimmy G's probably going to be the starter next season. But that's too early to tell. I don't want to go into that. But back to the offensive line, very, very no good. <laughs> that's all I can say. And the running game has been a little bit disappointing, in my opinion, but that's all, in fact, with the offensive line. But I mean, I don't want to blame everything on the offensive line, but at the same time, I mean, they get everything going they uh do play action they're able to get the running game going get the passing game going and it's a really pivotal part of an offense i think everyone knows that but uh, it's just been pretty bad so i mean that's pretty much the biggest reason i'm giving the d this whole four games from the colts all the way to the eagles especially against the cowboys and eagles that was just awful couldn't really do anything there but what can you do right so bad great for the offensive line offense in general so let's just go into the defensive side of the ball hmm how do you rank the defense? I have no idea. I mean, I'll end up probably giving them like a C. I'll give them a little bit of slack, to be honest with you, just because, I mean, they've been pretty okay for the times they've been playing uh, this whole year, actually. It's just that in the end, they can't really hold anything going because the offense is getting too many threes and outs, a lot of turnovers. The defense is on the field too damn long. This is pretty much the summary of their whole season. And, I mean, the injuries, oh, that has to hurt the most. I mean, you lose Jimmy Ward for the whole season now against the Eagles. You lose Sully Thomas for a while. And Ruben Foster is always in and out hopefully he can get healthy for next season and I'm really excited to see what he can do I'm always talking about him in any defensive video because I mean who doesn't like Ruben Foster that guy's a freaking beast in my opinion and I think he will be a beast uh coming into next year I mean I think it's just a growing pains year just because he's injured and I mean he didn't have the best performance against the Cowboys I mean he did truck Ezekiel Elliott that's the only one thing I can get a good note of but other than that I mean it hasn't been the best uh season so far for Ruben I mean he's only been playing two games and he wasn't even playing against the Eagles so I mean I don't know if there's any point to keep playing him but I think he might be playing this week against the Cardinals I'm not sure so don't quote me on that but we'll see what happens but just defensively I mean they've allowed a lot of touchdowns the defensive back is the biggest problem right now for the 49ers that's going to be something they have to address as well I mean the offensive line and defensive backs are the biggest positions out of everything of the 49ers landlord I guess you can say that they have to address in the offseason and the draft big time so hopefully they can do that and there's other injuries as well Eric Armstead he's out for the season so uh sorry if the lighting is really really going crazy the guy dang it son stop going crazy but
play. I mean, just a lot of injuries. Hopefully, they can all make a full recovery for next season and what have you. I mean, there's been a lot of injuries this year. Oh, man, it's been so unfortunate. But what can you do? You can't really do anything about that. I mean, it's beyond our control. So that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, overall, I'll give them a C just because they have been allowing a lot of touchdowns. I mean, you look at the stats right here. They have been allowing like four touchdowns a game. But at the same time, I mean, it's near the end of the game. It's not like during the beginning of the game, except the game against the Cowboys. That was pretty bad. <laughs> Anything but the Cowboys, please. That that game was just awful. I don't want to talk about that as much anymore. I mean, I can talk about the Eagles. That game was kind of okay. It was a little better than I thought, I guess, even though they lost 33-10. to But still, it's better than losing 40-10 to to the Cowboys. So just overall, I mean, it's been a bad four weeks for the 49ers, weeks five through eight. Hopefully they can make a little bit of rebound, win a game or two. I mean, these two games against the Giants and the Arizona Cardinals, they're really winnable in my opinion. So hopefully they can take advantage of that. Then they have a bye week and then they play Seattle the following week after the bye week. So uh, it's kind of favorable, I guess you could say. I mean, Seattle's always a tough team to play. I think we're going to be playing Levi Stadium uh, this time around because I think last time they played at Century Link, they almost won that game. But I don't know. It's going to be tough. So please let me know what your grades are for the 49ers offense and defense. Was it good? Was it bad? Uh, just let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And I'll definitely respond to you guys. That's going to be pretty much it. Please like, subscribe, do whatever you want with this. And I'm going to be catching you guys up later. So I hope you guys have a nice day, nice weekend, nice whatever. And this is probably going to be the last video of the week. And I guess I'll catch you guys up on Monday when I react to the Cardinals and 49ers game. So I'll see you all then. Bye, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the game. And I'll see you guys soon.